Good evening. We are live. Look at my resplendent background. Look at Joe first. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the Blue Monday live stream. Um, guys, how are we doing? Happy Friday to you, first and foremost. And um, yeah. Joseph D. Fares. Rick the Woodward. third. The third, sorry. Important. And USA, USA. I don't, don't know what we're talking about, guys. Do you? Um, Joe, how are you? Let's start with you. Tell us about your outfit, please. This is what I got when I went to a rib restaurant to try and keep me clean, but I thought it's so good I brought it home. And it, and it sat in a drawer for two or three years, and I think it's been worth it just for this moment alone. Exactly and right. He, and he normally wears it with nothing underneath. <laughs> it's a Saturday <laughs> night special. Craig, good to see you. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thank you very much. And like a giddy little schoolgirl at the moment. It's like Christmas and birthdays all rolled into one, isn't it? And Thanksgiving, Rich. And thanks, very <laughs> yes. Get out the pumpkin pie. Um, we want to hear from you, by the way. We are obviously we are talking um, takeover news reactions, whatever you want to call it. I'm I'm going to temper expectations a little bit, like I like I tried to do with Jim White before our pod recording that went out on Monday, and then halfway through he goes, "Oh yeah, the takeover is happening." Blah blah blah. Mark, I, from what I understand, X, Y, and Z. It's like, oh, I thought we were going to talk about it, but. Um, since that Monday, guys, I'm not going to say that we broke the story, but we were there or thereabouts, weren't we? Um, it's kind of snowballed, isn't it? And um, plenty to talk about. Um, so we do want to hear from you. The first thing I want to hear um, hear from, or the uh, first thing I want to see in the chat, is um, I want um, your reaction to this news with one emoji. Um, let's um, let's be creative and um, let's get a gauge of how we're feeling because um, it's been a crap 13 years, guys, hasn't it? Um, yeah. and light potentially at the end of the tunnel. Let me, um, in terms of those emojis, it, it's an eggplant in uh, American, yeah, with a bit of rain. <laughs> eggplant. <laughs> um, let's, um, let's, let's, uh, let me chuck up some comments first and foremost. Let's, um, let's say hello to folk and then we'll go through some emojis and then, then we'll get some more detailed reaction. We've got the news stories from the athletic, we've got some stuff from TWTD, we've got stuff from EADT. Um, I want to get your take on it, guys. We've also got a football match to talk about tomorrow. Um, we've all forgotten about that. Um, so we'll talk a little about, about Donny as well. But let's um, let's just chuck some chat in there. Evening to Bits. Hello, Bits. Uh, another day in the exciting happenings of Ipswich Town, as per our pod intro. Um, what else have we got? Elliot Leader here. Um, I'm nervous about this. Every time I let myself believe in this club, I'm left heartbroken. It's like an ab abusive relationship. It absolutely is. It's the hope that kills you. But fingers crossed more positive news to follow in the weeks to come chris bird make ipswich great again here here Good evening to mikey from the pod team he's given us an emoji straight off the bat um and he's also give hit that like button if you want the takeover to go ahead we have to say there is still a legal process to go through i think nick ames was confirmed there is a legal process going on um adam flat's given us an eagle good to see i can't see any of these emojis i just see little squares and things like that so ah, i can see them well give us a shout in the chat if i've just chosen to do to a, a format of interaction that is totally you need up, to upgrade from windows 98 joe that's what it is yeah get your XP i'm still on laptop. ms dos come on you can sort this out joe um there you go some love for you joe and loves your outfit mark beck howdy to you yeehaw nate king let's go ipsis blue tractors <laughs> tig's enjoying it as well um hot dogs and buds all round yeah cheers not bud but um something from our friends at away days um here we go what else have we got ipswich punch soccer club yeah i think that the kind of reaction that i was expecting um evening to peter as well um i've just lost you because all the emojis are coming in blimey right um let's do a little bit of reaction to the news story first let's start with some detail and then i will go through these emojis and um, keep them coming in i will do as many as i can um let's start with it all kind of snowballed um from this in the athletic this afternoon u.s investors on the cusp of ipswich takeover with cook to replace lambert um, American investors led by Los Angeles-based businessman Brett Johnson is on the verge of buying Ipswich Town for £17.5 million, pounds, The Athletic understands. Johnson's group will out like Bristol City Chief Exec Mark Ashton, 
um, to take over the day-to-day -day running of the club, but he's understood to be happy in Bristol. One staffing change is um, likely to be imminent, um, and that is the replacement of manager Paul Lambert with former Wigan boss and, um, yeah, Paul Cook. Arms in the air from Joe Fares. Joe, tell us how you're feeling about that news and specifically maybe the, the latter bit there. And on the, on the manager side, we all know Paul Lambert is a busted flush. He's not going to do anything for us here and getting him out of the club effectively. It's, it's the first thing that we need to do if we want to make a success of this season. You look at the candidates out there, Paul Cook is, is well, like I say, I personally, I'd like the Cowleys, but that's the Cowleys under Marcus Evans when we need someone to run the club from the bottom up. But Paul Cook has got a, he doesn't really have a blot on his copybook really when you look at his last sort of three jobs and maybe even earlier than that in, in the Irish league. But like I say, he did a really good job at Chesterfield, really good job at Portsmouth, sort of a Tighter superb job at Wigan. Like I say, he's, he's a manager that can get you playing some decent football and get you out of the league that you're in the right way, which is what which is what we want to see. So like I say, I'm sure every Ipswich fan, if you sort of offered them Lambert's going to go and Cook's going to come in, I think everyone would have taken it. And also, whilst we know there are bigger problems at the club with Evans, it's the manager was the one that we were focusing on because that was the one <laughs> sort of you deem likely to change rather than sort of rather the owner. Really, but if, if there is a, if this is all happens and it ends up effectively Evans and Lambert going out of the club, then it really does feel like a fresh start because both of the big problems sort of go in, in one, sort of in one hit. Craig, I guess that, and this is something that, that came up on the, on the pods during the week is, is, is it strange that, I, you know, there's a takeover that's happening in the in the background um, and negotiations and all that kind of fun stuff. But um, Evans and even these new owners, their chance of a return on their investment is that Ipswich Town does well at football, right? Sorry to use technical language, but I'm going to use it. Um, and therefore, if Paul Lambert is not succeeding in his role, regardless of this five-year contract, and this is a big debate we've had, then it surely makes sense to have made that appointment whether Evans was having the takeover or not. And it just appears that the takeover has given him the impetus to do it. But it's a long overdue decision, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And um, it's sort of been mooted for a while, hasn't it? We were chatting about just before that Paul Cook's name has been on people's lips since, you know, well, Christmassy time, turn yeah. of the year, that Phil on Those Were The Days was reporting that Evans had been in contact with Cook, um, that you know discussions were ongoing in the background in that regard. Um, and just related to that, this afternoon at the East Anglian um, has have added a bit, I think, yes, onto the their meeting. comment from last night that yeah, that words weren't quite as uninteresting as as Paul Lambert was being, you know, letting everyone tell, no, sorry, letting anyone know about this morning, and that in fact things may have got a little bit heated. And Phil from those of the days has said this afternoon that he wouldn't be surprised if Lambert goes in the next couple of days. I think were his words. So. Mm. You know, things may move in that regard quicker, you know, sooner rather than later. Just, just, on, like really, just on that side sorry. of things, um, my sort of word from inside the camp, sort of oh, speaking to a couple of people. In the know. That, Come on, Joe. People, people were not expecting Paul Lambert to be at work this morning after the meeting last night. It was a really, really heated conversation from all I understand. And that's not from one person. That's from three or four different people. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff on Twitter, wasn't there? And even TWTD that he's gone and all that kind of stuff. And it was sadly a false alarm and then events have suddenly transpired, isn't it? But, um, but yeah, it's, I wonder what the point of that meeting was now, to be honest, should we meet up in a few weeks and uh, go for a walk somewhere where we're allowed to in lockdown? You know, I'm, I'm trying to think what they talked about, unless, unless the, uh, the new owners and through Evans have figured out a way to um, end his contract without giving him a big lumpy payoff. Maybe that's, I don't know. Anyway, we're only we're hypothesizing, aren't we? Let's talk about some facts. Um, let me tell you about um, our potential new owner, Brett Johnson, and, and his involvement in football. Brett today. M. Johnson. Sorry, what, what? Brett M. Johnson. Brett M. Johnson. Thank you for giving full titles here. This is good. Um, the founder and chairman of Fortuitous Partners, guys. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them, a sports investment fund, um, and Benevolent Capital Partners, a private equity firm with investments in manufacturing, property, and sport. In 2015, he bought a minority stake in Arizona United, a new team in the USL, 
Championship, America's second tier, and became the club's co-chairman and president. His first significant appointment was making former Ipswich stalwart Frank Yallop the team's manager. Do we need to thank Craig Frank Yallop for maybe nudging Mr. Johnson in our direction? Yeah, yeah, very possibly, very possibly. Actually, I was having a chat with uh, my mate Glenn earlier about this. He rang up when sort of the news broke and just wondering whether if, um, I know you'll get to it a bit about Ashton from um, Bristol City, whether, you know, I know Frank Yallop's sort of taken a step upstairs in the US, hasn't he, um, at his current club. You know, you just don't know whether, if there's links there already, whether if we're still looking for a CEO or a, or a director of football in some respect, yeah, there's a link already there. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, th this is when it gets a, a bit interesting. There's some names here. This is all from the Athletic article, by the way. Um, within a year, the team had been rebranded as Phoenix Rising. The Phoenix is rising. Um, and the ownership group had swollen to include American DJ, songwriter, and record producer Diplo, Pete oh, Wentz, yeah. the bass player and lyricist from Fall Out Boy. I've seen them live in a nightclub more. in Cancun. There you go. As just drop it in there, Joe. It's fine. Um, since then, Phoenix Rising. I'm going to have to say that in a Peter K accent. I'm, I can't do anything other than that. Um, have become one of the most successful teams in the USL and have moved into their own 10,000 seat stadium with TDA Drogba and Sean Wright Phillips among the more notable former players. Drogba finished his playing career in Arizona at the age of 40 in 2018, and he has a minority stake in the club. The hope is that Phoenix Rising will eventually join the MLS. Any idea how they do that? Do they need a franchise to be booted out or something and take their place? Or no, they normally ideas? extend it by a couple of teams every couple of years, and there'll be seven or eight teams to go into about four, who then go into sort of the final two. But it costs a lot of money. Is basically the answer. It's right. not a it's not a cheap game unless you're David Beckham and you were promised an MLS franchise when you moved there ten years ago. It's hundreds of millions of pounds to get into that into the MLS now. Well, the English pyramid then is going to be nice and straightforward from then unless unless they shut the, the trap door to the championship mm. for us and they go on um, well I've, I've been um texting our u.s correspondent daryl jones ah he's, nice he it's said that cool. sort of the um sort of the cost like the money that they're seeking into this new rhode island team that they're looking at is something like 400 million dollars is the sort of that's what it's taken to get them get their stadium built get them established as a as a team and get them into even, I think even into the USL he's there. That's the sort of figures they're talking about it's, as a big, yeah. big development. Whereas um, it's like I say, 17 and a half million effectively for us is small change. Um, yeah. Just to continue then on the article, because they, they mentioned um, the USL team in Rhode Island and also a small stake in Danish, Danish side Helsingor, who I think have just been promoted as champions from the second tier and their sixth, Craig in the Danish first division. Yeah, he's we a had Danish a league look, expert. No, nope. Let's move on. Uh, so, um, so I think that's uh, in terms of the athletic article. There's some bits and pieces of padding and extra bits and pieces in there, but that's the gist of it. Um, any immediate reaction to that? I mean, the, there's some stuff in the TWTD article about Mark Evans enduring interest, but presumably, guys, if someone's going to take you over if they've got some credibility in the profession and in, in, in the game, albeit in, in America and Denmark, um, that's, that's not a bad thing, is it? Yeah. Well, we just, should we just temper it? Because we were, well, we are currently owned by a multimillionaire ticketing and events <laughs> supremo and organizer. Bring us down to earth, Craig. Come on. Hasn't gone particularly well over the last 13 or so years. Um, but yeah, and no, as you say, you know, the thing is, they'll be in it for one reason and one reason only, won't they? They're in it to to make money. They're not in it for the for the love of the club. Um, it was the same reason that Marcus Evans was in it for the certainly for the first couple of years. In any case, before he he sort of lost interest and just kept it as a going concern. Um, obviously, yes, we're all excited. We just you just got that caveat that you know these guys won't think twice about dropping us if things aren't going particularly well and they're not looking like they're going to get the return on the investment that that they want they'll soon be looking to uh to offload i can't imagine they'll be pumping in the sort of money that evans is currently doing just to keep us on a stable footing but is that much worse than the situation they're in it to which... well they're in it to win it aren't they you know the, yeah you, there's got to be a purpose to owning a football club and supporting a football club and we've been trading water for years and years and years you know i think people just need to let us have a little bit of hope 
but um, this I'm is going to be inter the... interspersing the the emojis while you while you guys chat because yeah. there's loads of them and you know it's and, a, the, a, and, and they're putting in a structure, aren't they? They're looking to put in a structure as well. Yeah, that, they're, they're already talking about a CEO, aren't they? Where yeah. like I say Marcus Evans has put in. I, th I think it's sort of about 100 million pounds now. And okay, he bought the 30 million debt for 8 million, but he's still putting 70 million since then. But it's almost like the first three or four years is 40 million. And then the last, however many of that is the other 30 million. Yep. Sorry, the last 10 years of that is that. And it's just, he's never, he's never got to grips with what owning a football club is about. And it's, it's not a point in Simon Clegg to run it for you. It's not then moving Ian Milne across from one of your businesses and having him as a part-time CEO. It is, And it's not about then Ian Milne stepping back and you saying you're going to take a bigger involvement and doing one or two days a month, not a week, and everything stopping there. If he'd have just, like I say, if Evans 10 years ago had appointed a proper CEO to run the club with authority, we wouldn't be in the position we are in now. And this is what these guys are going to do. They, they're sort of, sort of proved demonstrably they know how to run sports franchises as they are effectively and it's and it, i can guarantee brett m johnson isn't going to be sitting here having people phone him up having rosie in the sales office agreeing the price with him there's going to be somebody in place who is able to make those decisions working within a remit reporting to brett m johnson and the like so it's it's just a case of getting a structure right and even like they're talking about Mark Ashton and there's a, another guy mentioned on the TWT article who's at Bristol City as well. And they want to get people in to run the business for them successfully. And that is what this football club is crying out for. And presumably... As Joe said, sorry, as Joe said, there's just been nobody, regardless of who's been in place in theory in the club, there's been nobody with authority to make any decisions or sign anything off in regards to cost. And that doesn't, that's football side and that's, operations side hospitality side whatever side. you know i've got friends who've worked in the the um marketing department operations department you know marcus evans is signing off on getting a glass washer fixed you know the, and this and therefore it's just taking just everything just takes so long it needs to be signed off by the guy up in charge no one at the club has got any authority to do anything and that's what's hamstrung us for god knows how many years because yeah. even even though ian milne so it was often criticised. He at least was a senior body at Portman Road who that the head of retail, the head of sales, the head of marketing spoke to as effectively a boss. There's not even that anymore. There's, there's, there's no, and they're having to speak to effectively Lee O'Neill, who's the academy manager, to make decisions or to speak to Marcus above him. And it's just, it's, it's a way you'd run a sort of corner shop, not a football club effectively. Yeah, so if, if that if that level of professionalism and also making sure decisions are made in the right place happens, that's that's gotta be a good thing. And and that's that's the biggest indictment. And we've talked about it on this podcast and, and folks in the chat will have been saying it themselves. The last thirteen years, just this decision making has definitely held us back, hasn't it? It's stifled any opportunity to to innovate, to do exciting stuff, and even to succeed on the pitch. So if that's something that comes out of this as well as the success that hopefully will follow it, then, then we've got to be positive. We, that's, and that's, what we thought was going to happen. that's what we thought was going to happen when Evans took over, was that, the, you know, as I said before, he's an events organiser. That's what he yeah, does. But he's and not, you thought, you he, thought he, bloody he, he hell, he's like go. a business, though, doesn't he? Yeah, but you thought, when he, when he came in, you thought, this is it, we're going to change, we're going to see match day, you know, match day experience is going to be different, et cetera, et cetera. And that hasn't, that hasn't happened. Uh, I say anything else, anything, it's been it's been reduced and cut down. Yeah, um, they, they, These guys are out and out businessmen where I think people say, well, Evans must be a good businessman because he's worth so much money. But from what I understand, he made a lot of money early in his career. He invested it very wisely. And if he was a brilliant businessman, he'd have probably sold Marcus Evans group when he could have sold it for two, two and a half billion pounds, as opposed to just held on to it. And while the value has run down of it. And I so say he, he's a, he's an entrepreneur who has made a lot, a lot of money but he hasn't been a very good businessman in a, in a lot of areas for a long time from the sounds of things when you speak to people in the city and those in those areas. So it's no surprise he's run Ipswich like this. He's put, he's, some, he's a control freak, but he you can't spread yourself that thinly. Being Running a football club is, is a full-time job. It's a 24 yeah. hours a day, seven day a week job. It's not a part-time job. And that's where we failed. We, like I say, and I was looking on the um, fortuitous partners or the 
whatever capital belvedere capital website and they say one of the things they look for in these businesses is poorly managed businesses and i think ipswich is a poorly managed business the on the pitch it's poorly managed off the pitch it's poorly managed you sort those two things out and you could probably turn this business around quite quickly you could you could turn us back into a middle of the road championship club quite easily i think with what we've got here like yep. mentioned in the athletical article there's only three teams in the championship that had a higher average attendance than us last season yeah i just want to finish the bits on on evans and then and then we'll open it up to the kind of questions in in the chat so thank you for the emojis i've ended on adams there which is the track the flag which i think is is the perfect synergy of um of of the two topics that we're talking about um but uh, yeah i want to hear your thoughts on this you're are you optimistic are you slightly apprehensive um what are you hoping to see um any thoughts on paul cook any thoughts on Doncaster? As I said at the start, we still got a game to play tomorrow, so um, we'll, we'll get your thoughts on that in a sec. Let's just finish off on on the news articles and um, go to our friends at TWTD. Let me just um, show um, their article there as well. Let's give them a and they posted something yesterday, and I've had to follow up very quickly as well. Um, but the interesting things I took away from the TWTD article, guys, um, they've got a slightly different figure, a slightly higher figure, which I think is probably what Marcus Evans hopes. He's going to get which is um 30 million pounds i think um maybe go fish on that one um but the twtd is reported to say it's believed that evans will keep hold of um some of the training ground some or all of the bent lane side of the facility with development having long been eyed for a small section of the field between the already existing house close to the road um but also twt reports he's understood to be keeping a five percent stake in town presumably so he could potentially profit from any future sale if and when the blues reach the premier league um just to continue the points on the ownership of the training ground the that training ground um, ownership was transferred to another marcus evans company the marcus evans guernsey in brackets in 2020 largely for tax reasons which um our friends at turnstile blues were drawing our attention to early early back in um his ownership when that happened um and a bit more on brett johnson um understands much of the cash will come from the pension fund for the fire and police services of a so far unnamed u.s state um good i, I i'm not really equipped to make any marks on that but i don't think i'd want my pension invested in ipswich town <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, it's bad enough my current account taking a beating at the hands of them you can have a season ticket if you want, with, along with your pension. Um, Bristol City, we mentioned Mark Ashton before. Again, it was a, um, a name that's been strongly linked with us before, um, but uh, no confirmation whether he'll join. Um, and yeah, you mentioned this, Craig. Michael Appleton, pleased to be a target um, rather than Paul Cook, um, but he signed a four year deal with Lincoln earlier. Um, so, your thoughts on, I guess, it's a lot of us, and maybe this is something that we'll see in the comments in a bit. I tweeted Lambert and Evans leaving Ipswich on the same day, like Christmas and New Year. Oh, I think I did the kind of Leonardo DiCaprio from um, The Wolf of Wall Street um, um, GIF. But I, am I weird in wanting Evans and Lambert both out and gone so that we can move on? I guess from Evans's perspective, the deal is never going to be perfect, Craig. So I guess him having a little bit of skin in the game still makes sense if someone else does a better fist of owning the club than he did. Yeah, well, he's only he's only going to keep it, you know. Just I suppose his part of the deal, just keeping that as a as a fail safe, is just a little bit of additional um, security. If we if we are successful, isn't it? You know, he doesn't he gets a little bit more than the flat fee that he's getting paid. He's as I say he's just keeping skin in the game in terms of if we get successful, then the price of everything goes up accordingly. Um, Joe, being a member of the Suffolk gentry will know more about the real estate value around um, Rushmere than I. Um, so I'll let him have a, a chat about that. But in terms of the Appleton thing, that's that's really interesting, actually, because if you if you go through Phil's Those Were The Days um, article, it says that Appleton was a target and that he is, he is linked to um, Ashton and O'Leary um, and also that they, they're directors of, of the company, so which is Mike going O'Leary, to be the, sorry, from Oxford, yeah, Mike yeah, O'Leary, yeah, it's going to, and they're directors of this company, this Game, Game Changer, Changer 20, 20 company, oh, you know yeah, which is, sorry, Go for yeah, it. which is going to, which is basically the the husk that is taking this, you know, going to form the takeover in effect. 
So he's Appleton is part of it, um, you know, by by hook or by crook, whether it's you know directly or indirectly, he'll be around. Joe, have you got any comments on the real estate market for Rushmere? Um, the only the only thing I'd say is that the the area that he currently owns, the training ground, I think is not where the training pitches are on the Bent Lane side. I think it's only the sort of area that's used for car parking there. And there's sort of a site that sold previously um, in Rushmere Village again. But you're probably talking about two, two and a half, three million tops for, for that as a residential development, which obviously isn't to be sniffed at. But it's not like he's got a huge portfolio there. And it's it was worse than I think he sold it to himself for like one and a half million back in the day probably made a million pound profit on it but ultimately like Evans has um he's failed as an owner here but not for as you would when you're talking with Jim White about it it's not because he's um sort of nasty and done things deliberately badly he's just he's just been hapless at it and incompetent yeah. at it and ultimately he has stuck in 70 million quid maybe more 75 million quid of his own money and if he sort of is able to hold on to a 5% share in the club, I, th I think that's fair that if, if these guys do turn it around and we end up in the Premier League and rather than being worth 17 million, we're worth 170 million. Well, yeah, he probably does deserve to get a few million quid out of it because he has basically kept it going for the last 10 years. I think people forget the state of the club we were in when Sheepshanks was was selling it we were about to go into administration for a second time and we were really really up against it and evans came in splashed a lot of money about made mistakes but everyone does and ultimately the club has survived until now who knows what would have happened with otherwise everyone assumes we'd get a different owner but ultimately he, he has been the custodian for the last 13 years and now hopefully the people he's seen to sell the club to are better than him and he, he's done his due diligence on them as well as he always said he'd sell it if if the right offer came in. So hopefully that is the case. This could be his biggest success whilst as Ipswich owner, couldn't it? Which is ironic. Whilst yeah. losing a hundred million quid in the process. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we have we have I mentioned that the, the debt um, and the, and how the deal works here. I don't. I don't. Does that come up in the um, the Athletic article? Or is that? in TWTD. TD, the Athletic school. said he's going to write the debt off, don't they? Yeah, so that's pretty significant, isn't it? And, and as we said, it's it's about 96.4 million, according to The Athletic. Um, It'll be more than that now as well, because that was the... So uh, do I need to cut him a break? Do I need to give Evans a break then? Is that what you're saying, Joey? Well, well, he's... um Basically, that, that money, while it's a loan, is effectively... Giving a loan is the only way you can put money into a club and you get a little bit of tax back on it, effectively. So rather than give us £5 million, his company group lends us £5 million, and he might get a million pound sort of off his corporation tax bill at the end of the day if his other companies are making money. So while it's while it's a loan to Marcus Evans, it is also him just giving the club money. That's that's just the way that – that's the vehicle he's cho chosen to give the club money. So it's um, it's not a – it's not a loan. He's not writing it off. This money was always going. This money was always being poured away. This was just the running cost that he was just pouring away. But there was always a talk that he'd want something for it. And it's turned out, if if the club was successful, it's turned out or it's turning out potentially that what he's getting for it is a stake still in the club. Yeah, and, and a price tag not too dissimilar to what was spent um, recently to buy out Sunderland as well, which, you know, given the statues of the club, is pretty good. I, I think the 30 million number quite by TW. TWT, as we said, is a it's probably a little bit of a stretch, isn't it? Yeah, well, you think so, you know, it's 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 difficult for all of these journalists, is it? and none of them are going to press the button until such time as they're pretty sure of the facts they've got, which is it's what the, the um, East Anglian guys have been saying is that you know they've, pr they've been aware of whispers, but they can't they can't um, go to print on whispers. Um, but you'd think the same with the Athletic, is that they'd need to be pretty sure on their facts, and you'd you'd sort of back the Athletic as a as a uh, as a vehicle to provide you with relative truths, wouldn't you? It's, n it's not in it for the any other reason than to to give us the details. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's probably a, a decent going rate, isn't it, for a League One club that doesn't own the land that it's uh, situated on? And if you don't trust the Athletic, you can always trust the Blue Monday podcast, obviously as well. Um, let's um, let's stick some comments and questions in. I'll get your reactions to these guys um, as they come in. Um, please keep them coming and um, 
please give us a thumbs up if um, you're enjoying this as well. Always appreciate that. Um, I think most of them, oh, blimey. Wow. Plenty of comments here. Um, <laughs> I've got to lob this one in. Evening to Benjamin. Bloom Football Channel. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Um, I think this is Mrs. Nuts as well. Do you like Hugh Lewis in the news? Wow. Th these comments are out there. I don't know where to start. Um, add. <laughs> Adam Williams, I might add him at the um, wasn't using the pension fund of firefighters and police officers applied in billions where Bobby Axelrod nearly lost his trading license. Brilliant. Um, Quite possibly. I stopped watching after that ridiculous showdown at the end of season two. I, I need to be careful because I keep spoiling box sets that Joe Fairs is watching. So no more TV spoilers in the chat. Um, Tom's enjoying your outfit. Still plenty of compliments um, for Joe's outfit. Um, please keep it coming in. Um, ITFC Tweedy. Um, Cook's been offered jobs at Cardiff and Sheffield Wednesday, so we're getting a big pull. Joe, you just nodded your head at that, so I'll come to you. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, th I think any EFL expert that you'd speak to, sort of whether you sort of look at the podcast, the not the top 20 guys, the D3, D4 guys, I think everyone would see Paul Cook into a League One job as a real coup. Ultimately, he got Wigan promoted out of this league as champions, and he finished 12th in the championship as the rug was being pulled from underneath his feet constantly by the ownership on an incredible run. So he, he deserved a championship job with what he's done. So the fact we're getting him here is a, is, it is a big pull and it shows that we're still a big club. The issue, Craig, is that he's called Paul. And, he's and our last two managers have been called Paul. Yeah. It's not really worked out very well, has it? No. And as Joe said, and he's a scouser. Um, but hey, now, it, come on. He, he's, Scouts is called Paul. Next thing you know, Mullet. he'll, he'll have his um, he'll have semi-naked photos of him on the front of one of the tabloids. Right. Um, I, I, I'm quite looking forward to, well, look, crikey, let's caveat all this. I'm quite looking forward to a team with Paul Cook in charge and having Paul Cook on the sidelines as well, you know. He, he well, doesn't give, it. yeah, he doesn't give the players a moment's peace. And, it, you know, he's not in a nasty way, as far as we know, to fourth officials, who knows. But actually, it'd just be nice to have a bit of impetus and a bit of vigor and a bit of competence um <laughs> competence and uh, anyway and, uh, interviewing managers who've lost their voice post-match as well that's always a good sign exactly right um dirk forsdyke come on you suffolk county soccer stallions i'll go with that unless there's a acronym there that you're a unfortunately <laughs> the word you can make out of that which i haven't spotted um elliot um do they think they can dig for oil at portland road <laughs> maybe um Cook is a very big improvement on well at Wigan under those circumstances, says Charles. Um, will play attacking football, he adds on. Um, bits, um, not sure about Cook. Yes, he got Pompey out of League Two, but he's not the most popular with the fans. Do you guys know anything about that? I think Mikey, if he's still, if Mikey, if you're still watching, I'll come to your comment in about half an hour's time. I think you were planning on doing a bit of a profile on Paul Cook with maybe some Wigan and Portsmouth podcasters. So let us know about that and we can give that a bit of a plug. But, um, I mean, no manager appointment, guys, is ever going to be universally popular, is it? No. Um, like to, to give a bit of balance, I was speaking to one of my mum's friends today whose nephew played under Paul Cook at Portsmouth, and he wasn't a... Uh, and this was a guy who started regularly, was in the League Two team of the year, was a proper player there, and he's not a massive fan of Paul Cook and how, he's, how his attitude was. But then I've spoken to other people in the game, and they think he's a great manager. So, as always, you get two sides of the story. Yeah, it's the same with the guy, the um, Bristol City guy, isn't it? Um, Ashton, is it? I mean, there was a yeah. lot of people getting on Twitter pretty quick to give their views on him. Our driving to Ipswich, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, um, Elliot, we need to sign a quarterback, ASAP. Exactly right. We need Andre defense. Dezel go back to that quarterback role. Defense. Um, what else have we got here? Um, oh, Tom, I suggest you're not an Ipswich fan, but that's good to get a... That's Tom from the Blackpool it. podcast, isn't it? Ah, could be great pod. for you. Certainly in the use of life, just in time for the running. And just but he's, lo he's local, though, Tom. Tom's, yes. yeah, uh, yeah, I enjoyed Man your guys. He's a, he's a secret Ipswich fan. So yeah, yeah come Ipswich. and join us. Come and join us, Tom. Um, Adam Elvin, Sweet Caroline in America. Ameri if if I don't, yeah, if, if we don't see Paul Cook walking out the tunnel dressed like Apollo Creed in Rocky, wherever it was, three, in the full, like, Uncle Sam top I hat and... I want, to see, I want to see him and, and our, our new chief exec running down the beach. At, where is it? Where did it, Matt Holland used to go? Was it Brightlingsea, was it, Craig? Yeah. Oh, where was it? Down the beach and then arm wrestling or whatever. 
And that's what. No, I don't. This is getting maybe worse. we could change <laughs> blue and crazy to Rocky and Apollo. Oh, there, it just writes itself, guys. Give us the job. Give us a job, Brett. We'll we'll sort your marketing out. <laughs> no bother. Um, so George, I guess this is the question that a lot of people are thinking. Um, take it, Lambert. I assume he is Lambert. Will be gone after the game. Do you think if 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 all of this? I mean, we are speaking as if it's fact and it's going to happen. But presumably, if this is inevitable, does Lambert? go before tomorrow's game he goes with a, a, a his last game's a victory isn't it a top six team um, or yeah. I, I don't think anything would surprise us about lambert's future now whether we find out in the morning he's not taking charge of the game tomorrow or whether he's here until this takeover goes through i i, I do think that there's no effectively that there's nothing that will surprise us with lambert personally i'd um drive him back up to <laughs> wherever he's from himself in the jobs now, very as nice. long as he wears a mask and sits with the windows open because yeah. I'm a responsible employer good for you nice getting that one he's had there. COVID Joe I don't know if you knew yeah you're not going to get it again but has he oh okay well we don't know we, yeah let's avoid the C word um, Simon Chambers to be the equivalent of Tom Brady question mark we need to yeah we've gone a bit overboard with the American stuff haven't we but like an American stuff now I'm going to get a ginsters from the fridge um Mikey Penty Smith, Drogba, free agent, question mark. How old is he now? 42, I guess. I mean, he could do a job at League One, though, wise. Yeah. I, I'm, I think Drogba's attempted to get into sort of football administration side of it at the end of his career. So I'm, I'm not saying that would happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if if there is an existing relationship with them, whether he comes in, if he's going to, he's obviously not coming in as a player in any way, but I think he, if he's got a good relationship with these guys, he's looking to get into a football administration. Um. George also mentions this, how active um, he is in his socials. It would be nice to have a more transparent never know. Never, you might come on the pod. You never know. Come and join us, Brett, if you're watching. We'd love to have you on the pod. Um, slide into my DMs. But um, uh, active owner on Twitter, Andy Holt and Darren McKenzie. Good thing or a bad thing, Craig? I think it's a good thing, isn't it? Um, gives you an insight. It gives you a, a way into the, into the club. Um, but you just don't know how how... Is he, you know, is he the owner or how, where will he be in the whole infrastructure thing? You know, if he's sitting above, 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 just looking after the, the hedge fund guys, um, you know, without any direct interest or input into the football inside of things, then you might not necessarily need to speak to him. It will be the CEO that you'll need, mm. you'll want to have the interaction with. And as Joe, as I think as Joe said earlier, or as much as yourself, Rich, sorry, the, there's the two guys currently in place at Bristol City that um, were initially supposed to be sniffing around but they might stay where they are because bristol city are doing relatively well but it just looks like they are still looking to bring in that structure you know whether it be those guys or a different different set of guys it'll be the structure that they'll bring with them and they're the guys that you want to be chatting with i'd have thought um another one from george ready for the u.s pre-season tour i would love and go and have a um pre-season tour of the usl that would be right up my street um what else have we got here in the comments? Keep them coming in. Adam Flat, sunshine indoors. Sunshine indoors. Phoenix is rising. Um, mullet, evening to Mullet. Do we know if the women's team was a factor too? Or was that speculation? Like, with all due respect to the women's team, which is or has done incredibly well over the last few seasons, ultimately they are uh, nowhere in, in the grand scheme of things with women's football. And there is a plan for them to try and get higher up the leagues. And hopefully that plan will continue under these guys. But I can't imagine that there was any, the women's team made any difference to this sale. But hopefully the they'll, team, hopefully yeah. they'll sort of improve the women's team as, as we have been doing over the years as a club. It's about one of the only areas we have yeah. got right. But hopefully they can continue and we can have the women's team up in the sort of um, women's super league or the women's championship. They're upwardly mobile without the need for external support. So um, even to the women's team and um, Joe Sheehan particularly. And um, Paul Green, here we go. Let's temper some of this um, ridiculously over-the-top reaction. Administration within three seasons. Care for what you wish for. Someone had to get care for what you wish for. Um, Paul, thank you for doing that. we should have it right. Um, yeah, there you go. Dig straight back. Um, what else have we got here? Say, fit, fit, like, there's no guarantee things are going to go well here, but ultimately we're, we're drifting to nowhere under Marcus Evans. So what, what what are the other options, effectively? He's demonstrably proven over 13 years he is not going to turn this round. So at, at best under Evans, we get a manager in who finds lightning in a bottle and maybe gets us as close. Well, like I say, the, the best we can hope for is 
we should be in the championship, but the best we can hope for is a season like Mick McCarthy had here in 2014-15, where everything goes right. You find a goal scorer to get you 27 goals and you start the season brilliantly and you just hope you can get over the line. But there's there's no infrastructure being put in place to make that at all likely under Evans. So I say, yes, be careful what you wish for, but ultimately what's the point of what's the point of existing as a football fan if there's no hope? Exactly right. And and, and to I assume that's elder Grizzly, Grizzly Bear Studios, um flip us for a profit. How? By being successful. It's the only way, isn't it? Yep. Being so successful you go, up, you, go up division, you go up a division, you'll be more profitable than you are at the moment. You'll be worth more yeah. than you are at the moment. You always buy at the bottom, don't you? And yeah. And to be fair, you know what? I, what's and worse? That's what, than... And that's what Kieran Maguire said, didn't he? That the price of football guy on Twitter was intimating earlier in the week, wasn't it? That his cryptic um, picture of a tractor having, you know, saying that well, Sunderland's done. There's, there's only really one one big name in town now in League One that's that's next, right for the picking. Because you know it, it can't. Well, it can get lower, but you'd hope it wouldn't get any lower. But, you know, they're, they're buying at the lowest point. To, and it wouldn't take too much. You wouldn't hope for us to make the next, at least one step up. Look at Wickham, who were taken over, I think, at the end of la- this time last year, pretty much. Just you know, the one-all draw on, on um, New Year's Day. And... But, but Wickham could be in the Championship for 10 years, and they're still not going to be a club yeah, that yeah, touches yeah, us. You see what I mean? Like, are they? So... Yeah, it's a speculative investment, isn't it? And... And the trajectory has been upwards, and and that's benefit mutually beneficial, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, what else have we got here? Um, oh, hello, Ashley Bell. Let's hope the EFL's fit and proper persons test is a bit more stable than it has been previously. Yeah, we've had our fingers burnt there. Is is there is, is there such a thing as a fit and proper persons test in 2021, guys? Is this? Yeah. Well, there is, and like I say, I I don't envisage there being any problems in these guys getting through it when you see what they've done with around the globe with their investments in football. They're, they're not fly-by-nights, are they? These are serious professionals trying to make some money out of football and hopefully they can make some money out of us because if they're making money out of us, it's because we've done well. Agreed. Um, Craig, your your predictions or thoughts on this one from Andrew, do you think there'll be a big clear-out of staff throughout the club? I guess we're not here to speculate. I know there's, obviously there might be people from the club watching. We don't want to... No, these are no, well, and stuff. You would have you would have thought the footballing side of well, how on, hang on, the the football administration side of things there will be, won't there? Because they're looking to bring in their own people to run things. So and there isn't much, isn't much there. To there, there isn't there. There exactly. isn't much there to clear out. Effectively, yeah. as a head of as so a head of football operations, people. yeah, as a head of football operations, as a head of an academy, uh, which you'd think would would stay in place. It's only really, you would think, you know, Leo Neal's position's probably at risk unless he gets shifted to the side to do the job he was doing previously. Um, the manager and his cohorts, apart from that, what else is there? Yeah, I suppose what you'd say with Leo Neal is he's the head of football operations, but he's also the academy manager. At worst, you'd expect him to stay on as academy manager, wouldn't you? Because ultimately you need one of those, and Brian Klug doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I guess, you know, we are speculating on things. There is plenty of Water to go under the bridge before there won't, there won't be there won't be a clear out stuff. It'll be more stuff coming in. You got you got to have people, the guys that are holding the big guns that fire the t-shirts into the crowd, aren't you? <laughs> well, ironically, this is what Lambert's been crying out for, isn't it? In the last few weeks, on what guns that fire t-shirts oh, into the crowd, <laughs> infrastructure and hierarchy, isn't it? But so he's got a point. I think we'll give we'll give Lambert that one. Um, evening, Eric. Looking good, chaps. Any any compliments will always get um, put on here. So make sure you um, <laughs> make sure you do those. Um, even when you're lying, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't care. I can't tell. Uh, maybe I'll have to start. This is for Matt. Maybe I'll have to start backing Ipswich to win now rather than whoever we've been playing. Yeah, yeah. Craig, are you still... Um, Ipswich has basically... been sending Matt's kids through college, I think. I was gonna, keep it um, American. Um, but, Craig, you bought an extra wing on your house by betting nil nils at half-time, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. Last, right couple, last couple of years. No, no this sort of, it's been a bit sketchy of late. I say, I don't think I'm alone in sneaking Ipswich's opposition into into an accumulator here or there over the last couple of months. Um, but yeah, crikey, under McCarthy, there was a there was a little conglomerate of us, little consortium that were, yeah, all aboard the nil-nil train at, uh, at half-time. Um, me and Joe, I think, both had to cash out bets to get some money back from bets for big bets towards Oxford last week. I think you don't mind me chucking you under the last, Joe. I did exactly the same for this worth, so... 
you know, I've got to eat. Um, Powergen, Powergen. Not sure if I pronounced that. Not sure if I feel confident with another Paul in charge. Um, yeah, um, I think we've. Um, and then Mikey says that. I'm not sure Mikey. Uh, anyway, um, I'm losing track. Let me get some proper. Oh, here we go. What do we think will happen with Mr. Near? You, you started on this one, Joe, so let's let's dwell on it a little bit more. Is there a role yeah, well, there for Leo? Ultimately, he's he's the head of football operations and he's um, the academy manager. Well, we will still need an academy manager. So even if it's even if they're bringing their own guys in in the very very short in the, well in the short term at least, his job is is required for us to hit our E triple P's. And generally in business, people like to come in and take a look at things first before they start making decisions. They don't want to come in and just rip it up on day one. So I'd say hopefully there's still a job for Lee. So I think he's a, I think he's a good guy and sort of doing a doing a tough job at the moment. At the end of the day he was at the end of the day he was sort of shifted in in line just to be Marcus Evans's latest human shield, wasn't he really? Mm. Just to take the flack that gets directed at the the manager or the owner so you know if he can slide back to what he was doing previously then i don't think anyone's had much much issue with it um any thoughts on this thought from ashley that's where i was actually going when you were speaking joe should we fear for the academy and other lots of other teams the new owners have start birmingham city i think we're an example brentford obviously i think the one of the, the big things in our favor as um is that we are so isolated geographically so we we do have a big catchment area around us and it is a community venture as much as anything it's a way of Ipswich Town getting into the community so you'd hope not but I know there's people who sort of have plans that they think the sort of under nine to under 15 age groups is not worthwhile and maybe you just pick it up at under 16 so there's plenty of talk out there but I obviously really hope that the academy stays well it gets more investment and is allowed to flourish as opposed to just be being cut but until we, until we hear look, from them, we don't know. They'll look, again, at they'll look at it as a return on investment, won't they? Mm. They'll look at everything in, in black and white, you would think. Yeah, but ultimately, well, you, you look at the academy, and at the moment, you've got Flynn Downs starting every game when he's available, effectively, worth at least a couple of million quid. Andre Dazelle, who you've got teams looking at in the leagues above. QPR, I think the latest, Blackburn. You've got Teddy Bishop, who's playing well. Miles Kenlock is coming and he's playing well. But those three midfielders, you'd probably get five million if you sold those three at the moment. You've got Idris El Mazzuni, who's linked with sort of bigger clubs. Brentford, most notably. Dobro has been linked with Brighton, Atalanta, Sofia. Teams all, all around Europe. Alan Viral's the latest to be linked. From what I understand, that the three teams involved there is Everton, Leicester and Lille. So these are all, these are big clubs looking after our, looking at our players. And as long as, as long as the academy keeps producing first teams players and keeps producing talent that can be sold, it should be okay. But it's just making Pace sure yourself, that it, it does that. Yeah. Um, UK. I just did this so I could say the name UK Aotic GTA Five. Honestly, Evans has been awful, but respect where it's due if he wipes the debt. Um, here, here. He's had no other option. Yeah. No, no one else gonna is going to buy us. Are they? No one's going to buy us if there's if there's a hundred million pound of debt Come hanging on, around. Ninety six so. million, please. Yeah. Um, this one here um, from a Bristol City fan. Mark Ashton is incapable of doing his job properly. Takes control. And never gives head coaches any sort of control. Yes, man. The owners and his. There we go. Um, yeah. Well, like I say, we we don't know that, but I'd, I've read something from the Watford paper, and they weren't particularly complimentary about Mark Ashton. So we'll see whether. He is good at his job, effectively, but we there's talking about a yes man taking control. We haven't had anyone in that role, so we're probably crying out for the things that Bristol City want. But you look at Bristol City commercially; they're they're very successful as a football club and good in the community they're, 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 as well. Good in the community, and they've really grown over the last well ten years, effectively. With obviously a lot of that is due to Stephen Lansdowne's money and the fact he cares so much about the city of Bristol and is sort of building it up like he has done the rugby club. But but ultimately, like I say. We, we we just do not have anyone running the club, and that is what we desperately need. Yeah. Um, and, and as always, the same with managerial appointments. There is never going to be someone in football that doesn't divide opinion. There is always going to be someone who's got a. I'm not going to pretend that an axe to grind or something like that, but you know, someone will read something or hear something. You know, Evans himself, you know, quotes that he's put out there in the past. He's probably acted in the in what he thought was the best interest. And there's a good sizable proportion of our fan base that think he's got a really bad negative agenda. And the reality is always a bit more nuanced, isn't it, guys? So, um, but Ashley's added, 
at least we'll get rid of all the horrible Marcus Evans sign. Imagine if Marcus Evans is the sponsor from the shirts still. What's going to be there instead, Ashley? It's going to be some sort of Las Vegas as you're coming down Portman Road. There'll be like oh. lights blaring out, and like uh, one of the cowboys waving at you as you're approaching the uh, Bobby Robson stand. Fremont Street. It'll be like Fremont Street in uh, all, all down Portman Road with the lights everywhere. I'm quite looking forward to it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, damn right. I'll have that. Um, Jack. I think Jack is a, is someone known to both Joe and I. I think even Jack. And um, what are the fundamentals that these investors are seeing in ITFT, do we reckon? This is, again, to go back to Nick Ames' article um, last year. And Joe, you talked about this on the pod. Um, there is, there is uh, we talked about the assets maybe not necessarily being there, but there is something to invest in there, it, it, which isn't there. It's not, we shouldn't well, do ourselves down, should we? No, I, I think people, and I think it's with the town and with the football club, people from Ipswich do tend to look on the negative side of things. But ultimately, we're in the third tier getting sort of 20,000 fans week in, week out in the third tier. We're an hour down the road from London. We've got a 30,000 city stadium, which we will fill if we're, if we're succeeding. Like I say, if, if we're at the top end of the championship, that'll, that'll be full there. And you can't just create a fan base and... You see these clubs where owners have come in, they've got them up the leagues, and you need to look at your Wiggins, teams like that, that spe- or Hull even, spend a long time in the Premier League, and they come down and they've, they've got no fans, effectively. Yeah, yeah. But Sun- Sunderland are obviously the exception, but you look, at this, you look in this league, and it's us, Sunderland and Portsmouth, are the biggest clubs in it by an absolute street. And that's, and that's not because of recent success or anything. It, it's because we are... Yeah. We're, we're big clubs with big fan bases, and there's no other way around it and like i say you just see the amount of interest that we we gain when there's stories about us in the national media what league one teams are sort of have articles in the telegraph the times the guardian the the mail just because the effectively the manager's doing rubbish that that's what the stories were the manager's doing rubbish and the owner's not up to much they're, they're not normally only teams in this league that that sort of have that coverage of ones where they're sort of about to go bust because the owners are an absolute shit show effectively and hopefully that's not the next time we start receiving coverage and apologies for any uh any offended people by the language we have this is pre-early this is pre-watershed joe we have, this is rare territory for us to be on on the i said a ship show okay there you go ship shape and ready to go um jcitfc craig um cynic says that this uses coinciding with season ticket renewals um imminent question mark yeah this is a good ploy by marcus evans if this doesn't exist, and it's just a season ticket selling ploy, isn't it? Yeah, crikey, he's put some groundwork in, hasn't he? If this is all just down to uh, <laughs> getting a A4 envelope through the post in the next uh, month or so, he's created all these uh, spurious Twitter accounts and companies and registered companies with companies' house and God knows what else. Um, no, I think I think we'll if if those were the days is is to be believed. Phil seems to think that it's it's going to be happening next month. Nick Ames has said it's a matter of weeks rather than months. So this could be you know, done and dusted before we even receive our renewal packs. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, here's Mikey. I mentioned that before. Yes, hoping to speak to Pompey and Wigan fans to get the lowdown next week. Um, they both have positive things to say about him. Um, Simon, yeah, that's a shot in the arm we all need to say. Things are getting... So depressing with this wall of silence from absolutely everyone at the club. Thank you, The Athletic, for getting this news out there. Um, guys, did you, your immediate reaction, I didn't really ask for this at the start, but presumably, Craig, your immediate reaction to this, as, as much as there's been chat and stuff out there, presumably was, Wee. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, A, it may not happen. B, it may go horribly wrong. But for God's sake, who cares? Just let us have some... You know, glimmer of hope and you know sunrise on the horizon that you know, things may may it's actually get happen. get better for us. Yeah, Joe, I, I assume you were. Yeah, yeah, no, the same as Craig. Really, uh, ultimately, this, like I said, this might not be the silver bullet or the panacea to change things, but ultimately, we are failing under Marcus Evans, and we've been failing a long time. We might have been able to change the manager and be hoping to sort of seeing upturn in fortunes but ultimately they were going to be working under the same constraints that all the other managers other than Mick McCarthy have failed under so losing Evans as an owner for all the money he's put in he hasn't been able to make the right decisions for the football club and he still hasn't put somebody in place to run the club he's still 
scrimping on costs on staff around the place and all the money's going to the first team and it's just not a, a sustainable way to make a club run for the future. It's just jam tomorrow, effectively, isn't it? Nothing gets better by staying the same. Um, Dave Gore, uh, Lambert on gardening leave question mark. Yeah, I've actually sent an email to the club recommending that that was a strategy they employ and I you know, didn't get much of a reply to that one. Uh, Mikey, um, he sounded had a weeds in bigger cities. Um, how to the air on that one. Um, Lowy Blue, big clear out of the squad at the end of the season even more. I, I guess a managerial change that was always inevitable, but is that more likely? Do you, uh, I guess we maybe Mikey's... I don't think it's any more or less likely than what it was, to be honest. I think that because we are in February, it's, it's it's close to the end of the season now, isn't it? It's the end of February, it'll be March or Monday. The new manager is going to come and come in and analyse the players and we'll get rid of what he wants and sort of keep the, keep the ones he wants to keep. But it, it may it may tie in with what Phil says about Lambert leaving in the next couple of days. Is that you would think because of that it will be it will now be happening sooner rather than later to allow Cook or whoever it happens to be to have a good look at everyone and see how it goes from there, wouldn't it? A good question from Mikey, which was also in my mind: Is this season still alive if Cook takes over next week, or too much traffic? S- still alive, still alive yeah. for me. Like I say we we win tomorrow and we're. We're quite close to the playoff positions. Like I say, what did the Chris Rand's stats? I think it went from fifteen percent to twenty five percent with the win on Tuesday of getting into the playoffs. Yeah, my little if, points per game graph as well. Suddenly, I like say a couple more wins, and that twenty five percent becomes forty percent. And like I say, we, we're going to need to win. We're going to need to go on a couple of runs. You're going to need to go on a couple of runs where we win four games out of five, five games out of six. And we're going to need to do that a couple of times. And if we do that, we'll be in the playoffs, no doubt about it. But I don't see us doing that under Paul Lambert, personally. No. Get it done. Um, what else have we got here? I, I, we're going to finish in the next few minutes. Um, thank you for sticking with us, and thank you for your comments. I want to get some predictions for um, tomorrow for Saturday for Doncaster, a scoreline prediction, who will be in the dugout. Um, caretaker, potentially. You know, the Dyer and Butcher rumours have never really gone away, have they? So maybe that's an option. Um, I'll get Joe and Craig's view, but I'm also here interested to... See what you folks have to say as well. Um, what else have we got here in the comments then? Um, yeah, I guess this is a flavour of that. If Lambert's still here for tomorrow's game, does he give two hoots about it? Will that affect the players? Well, you don't know about the players, do you? But ultimately, Lambert, Lambert's in for a little while has been thinking about his next job. And if he if he can go out on a run of four unbeaten games, then he'll he'll sort of be able to then go to a new owner and say, look, I was being managed out by the previous owner, spent the last few months sorting out a takeover deal. I'd kept us up near the playoffs while all this was going on, blah, blah, blah. But he needs to win games to keep it, um, well, like I said, just, just to keep himself relevant in case he does want to stay as a manager. And the, and the thing is, you know, that if it's, if as we think it may be the same team going out tomorrow that played during the week, then, you know, they're not idiots. That might, even amongst themselves, they don't need a bloke on the sidelines telling them what to do. The, the way we're playing at the moment is keep it simple, stupid, isn't it? It's not rocket science. It's not intricate. It's not needing them to be coached from the sidelines at the moment. It's, so it's what we've all been crying out for for a little while. It's just you know, simple, slightly more direct football. So, But then to be fair to Lambert, during the week, he was, he was you know, around the technical area. He was, you know, giving all the guys a hug as they were coming off, whether that's for the cameras or not, you can make your own decision. But he was pretty active on the sidelines and he must have known something was in the offing even then. So I don't see an issue with that tomorrow if he is if he is in charge. He, you know, as, as Joe says, he'll he'll use it as a as a advantage to his next job and he can ride off to the sunset with a couple of wins in his back pocket. I was going to say, it's weird how that's... Uh, is, is, is there anything we can read into the, the run of, well, clean sheets and better performances and obviously a victory? You know, is there anything around that? You know, a lot of people send. He knows he's going, and the the takeover might be happening, so he's kind of going the, for the, it now. But. The last two games for me, we seem to have lined up and and played how I'd expect us to. If you'd have let the players sort the team out themselves, almost. Yeah, you mentioned that. On really Tuesday, back to basics. Yeah. Really, really simple. Four four two effectively. I know not quite that with Parrot playing off, but just keeping it. Really, really four, simple. Four, Getting one, the ball forwards it? quickly and trying to play from the front as opposed to trying to play from the back. The players haven't enjoyed that style this season, and I say I think it's just it's just gone really, really basic. What is it? It makes me 
it makes me wonder is that the the whole way we're playing this sort of mentality is supposed to have supposed to have come from Evans himself, isn't it? He wants us to play this way. God knows why he's decided he wants to play this way on the back of watching football for ten years. Um, and you know, is it that Lambert said, "All right, you know, it's your gig, mate. I'll I'll play how you want us to play." And then over the last two or three weeks, when it's sort of come to light that he might be on his way out, or you know, regardless, the takeover is happening and he'll be out of a job in any case. He said, "Right, sod it. Let's let's go with the way I thought we should be playing." And I know I'm probably giving him too much credit here, but you know, let's just go back to basics. There's um, I, I'm trying to find the question now because I I put it up on the screen and then um, as you guys were talking, obviously because we've had loads of them. So thank you everyone for those. I'll go through the predictions in a second. Someone mentioned, um, does Cook coming in? I mean, again, there are people joining late. We need to caveat this. This this is this is not a done deal. This is still work in progress, but it's looking um looking likely. Is there, there's there's obviously a new lease of life for Nolan and Jackson, isn't there? Um, which is presumably positive, and they'll be wanting to prove a point, won't they? All, all the players will be wanting to prove a point, won't they? And it's those in the team will want to be staying in the team. Like I say, you look in there, you, even someone like Luke Chambers, who's playing at the moment, he's he's the captain, but his contract's up in the summer. They, they aren't, they, footballers cannot let their standards slide, otherwise they'll, like I say, you're only as good as your last game, and it's sort of a what have you done for me lately sort of business, effectively. And if if you're not sort of doing the goods, you won't stay in the team. And and once you aren't in the team, you then won't get a new contract. And I don't think anyone wants to be an unemployed footballer this summer with all that's going on with COVID. Uh, true. Um, thoughts on Sean's point there? Norwood might thrive under Cook. I mean, he's starting to thrive under Lambert the last week at least. Yeah, I think he'll thrive under anyone, really. I think he's yeah. a good player, as long as they can get his head right and get him playing the way he wants to play. Um, lots of predictions for Ipswich victories coming in. Um, Craig, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on tomorrow, the scoreline, and who will be in the dugout? Um, I think I think we'll win, to be honest. I think, believe it or not, I believe Doncaster are below us in the form table. You know, they're not on a great run themselves. Um, That's where Jonathan's point, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um you know, we've got that was a great result during the and a really, really good performance during the week. So, you know, the the team must be buzzing on the back of that. As you say, as we've said, they're playing a, a more basic, simple style of football, which seems to suit the, the personnel that are playing. So yeah, no no reason at all why I don't I think I'll go for a a one nil or a two nil myself. And who will be administering it? I think Lambert will be in and I think Lambert will go some point on Saturday night or Sunday morning, I reckon. Joe? Yeah, I, th- I think similar to Craig, I, I think like I, said, I, th- I think we'll probably win tomorrow, maybe sort of 1-0. And like I, said, I don't see Lambert being in charge. I don't f- think he's going to want to sit on a bus up to Accrington on Tuesday night when he knows his <laughs> future is done. Yeah, well, either way, whatever happens, you can um, hear the post-match assessment on the Blue Monday flagship show with um, Craig, Seb and myself. Um, so join us for that. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Loads of them. I tried to put as many as I could up on there. Obviously, we'll keep you as much in the loop as we can on um, events that are coming up. And um, here we go. Two touchdowns to zero from James <laughs> Fist. Um, a one all from Lord Ronald as well. Um, but obviously, keep a lookout on TWT, the EADT, all those, um, and hopefully positive news to come. And we'll be chatting about it on the podcast. And we've got the games coming thick and fast. So, um, we'll keep you try and keep you informed guys. I will, um, I don't know whether he wants the final word or whatever, but I've enjoyed that. Thank you for your company on a Friday evening. I'm going to go and get yep. another beer, but I don't know. About you. I'll make everyone guys beer. taste a bit sweeter this evening. When it hopefully excellent. See you then. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs>